Hello everyone, thank you for joining this webinar today. My name is Heidi Garcia and I'm a member of the Patient and Public Involvement and Engagement Team here at the NIHR Central Commissioning Facility. Some of you may probably already know me through various exchange of communications. I'm here with four members of our long-standing and experienced public contributors who have been contributing to the work of the NIHR for some time now. We have invited them to share their thoughts and experiences on being a public committee member on our research programs advisory committee. Research programs have slight variations in how they run a committee meeting, but the role of, the pub of a public member is the same. So we hope that our speakers' experiences will give you an insight into the role and provide you with some guidance and helpful tips. I'd like to start first by introducing our members, our public members here with me today. We have Mary Ray. Hi. Monique Pisani. Hello. Philip Hurst. Hello. And Steve Edgar. Hello. They have all been members of one or more committees and are also regular public reviewers of research funding applications. The topics we will talk about today are tips on providing your written assessment, how you can prepare for a committee, how can you contribute effectively to committee meetings, and what is helpful to the chair and the program, and any final thoughts and comments from our public members here today. We have also sought the thoughts and views of chairs of advisory committees. You will see one of their comments on the screen now and more throughout the webinar. We will be recording this webinar. It is about an hour long. Our discussion will be about 20 to 30 minutes. Afterwards, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. Please note that you are muted. If you have a question or a comment, please type this into the chat box, which is being monitored throughout the webinar. I will read out the questions at the end of our discussion. You may also experience a slight delay in the sound. If you cannot connect, please email ccfppi at nihr.ac.uk. So let's begin with our first topic, providing written feedback. Some of the research programs, such as Invention for Innovation, and program grants for applied research, ask their committee members, including the public members, to provide written comments before a committee meeting. A tip from one of the program chairs says, highlight any points that puts doubt to the PPI, report the weaknesses and how fundamental or serious it is to the grant, highlight the things that need clarification, or could be difficult for others to see and why. Mary, please can I ask you to share some of your perspective on this? Yeah, okay, so when you're reading the application and be preparing for writing your review, it makes things way easier if you hi put highlight in the application on any of the points that you think are ones you want to comment on. And then before you start filling in the review form, when you've done all your reading, Take some thinking time because you might realise things you need to go back to and look at more closely. You can look at the other reviews that people have written on the research management system about the same application, either before or after you make your own assessment and you develop over time what suits you. The aim is to give your view on strengths and weaknesses of the proposed research together with suggestions for ways things might be improved. So it's important to look at how inclusive the research plans are. Will they recruit people from different communities and backgrounds? And do they have good plans to cater for patients or carers' needs, like language or access needs, those kinds of things, so that a really wide range of people can take part fully in the research? As you write your review in each of the, the prepared questions that are on the form, you can use your notes to include evidence for any point you make. And this is where the highlighting is helpful because you can go back to the actual application and use a page reference from the application so that you've, you've made clear why you're making the point you're saying. 
it helps to make your comments using bullet points and white space because that makes it easier to read if you've got a dense block of text it's harder for those who've got lots to read and it's worth saving your first draft and leaving it for a bit before you make your final edit because then you can look for ways to cut out stuff that isn't important and say things more simply it's also worth knowing whether you're a hawk or a dove if you know that you're fairly critical, check whether you've been too harsh and adjust your wording so it's constructive. So, for example, turning a comment into a question can help do that. And if you're a dove and you've been too kind, see if you can suggest any improvements, because the aim is to be a critical friend. Your review goes to the research team and on to... Thank you, Mary. Steve, would you like to add anything? Um, yes, the first place I like to start when I'm reading an application is usually with the plain English summary or, or what we also call the lay summary. And I was surprised to find that this is where even the committee professionals are likely to start. There are a lot of clues in the lay summary as to the quality of the application aside from the basic facts that it gives you. So what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a strong narrative. Does it tell the story? Do I understand the problem and do I understand how they propose to address it? Do the outcomes seem important to this particular patient carer group and have they provided evidence that it actually is? More importantly, do I hear a patient voice in the summary? And, and what I mean by that is, do I feel that the patients or members of public have had any hand in writing or commenting on the con content? Because it will show. And if this is all good, then I'm, I'm much more confident that the rest of the application will be well written and easy to understand. Uh, the next step is to move on to the PPI se section and assess its credit credibility. Does it seem vague or does it name names and talk about specifics? Is there an ongoing strategy for the PPI activities with defined roles for the participants? When did they start talking to patients or is it something that they aren't actually planning to do unless they're funded? Then I usually check the financial section and see if the funds that they've allocated for their PPI activities seem sensible for the kind of activities they've got planned. If they don't, you really have to wonder why. Finally, you have to have a quick read through the whole application for inconsistencies. And also you may find that they put some PPI comments uh, somewhere else in the application and missed it in the PPI section. And try and find out, does the patient participant pathway that they've described seem to be consistently described throughout the application. Thank you, Steve. There are also some useful resources, such as the Guidance for Public Reviewers of Research Funding Applications, and recently an online course about providing a review on the research applications that members of the public can refer to. The links are on the slides now. On the next slide, you can see one of the chair's comments who says, it's helpful when public members provide a point of feedback that is specific and is evidenced with clear examples from the application. First, I'd like to ask Steve to share some of his thoughts and experiences with us. Well, I think the first thing you need to do is take a breath and remember what your purpose is. Um, you're a member of the public. You might have some experience of the area that the application is addressing or more likely you're a committee member and you're representing the public with a more general view. You don't have to sweat over the methodology or the statistics or the science, although you may have a view on it. The purpose of your review is to assess the value of the research, research question and whether you think the applicants will be able to answer that question based on their explanation of their project. Thank you, Steve. Philip, would you like to add anything? Uh, yes, thanks. Um, You'll have some of the applications where you are the designated person to, to lead on them for PPI purposes, but make sure that you've read all of the applications, not just those you're designated to speak to, because you may pick up some points that your colleague has missed. So make some brief notes of your thoughts and key issues on those other applications. Thank you. Mary, anything to add? Yes, I think it's really important to make sure that you're prepared to be brief. So before the committee meeting, make a note of uh, at a maximum two or three key strengths or weaknesses for the applications that you're leading on and you can even practice saying them out loud 
So you make sure you can headline what you think are the most important points in just one or two minutes at the most. Okay, thank you. What about you, Nanique? Yeah, I've always found it useful to ensure that I've actually got a hard copy uh, available and or have access to an electronic copy on a laptop of the review that I'm, I'm looking at uh, on the day of the actual committee meeting itself. Thank you, everyone. That's all very helpful. So we're going to move on to our next section, which is how can you contribute effectively at committee meeting? So once you've read all the applications you are allocated and written your notes and assessments, the next stage is to think about how you can contribute your views effectively at committee meeting. Philip, can you share with us your thoughts and experiences on this, please? Yes, thanks. Um, I think for all of us, we tend to focus a lot on what we're going to say at a meeting, but actually we spend most of our time hopefully listening. Uh, and active listening is a, a key contribution for all of us, by which I mean look at the person who's speaking and give positive non-verbal communication. It will help them to be more effective and hopefully they'll return the favour when it's your turn to speak. If someone has already made the point that you were going to make before your turn to speak, just note it and say you agree. There's no need to repeat the, the whole point. You should be confident uh, you've been selected for this role and nothing is ever totally clear cut. So your opinion counts as long as it's based on the evidence you have from the application. It's important to try and judge the mood of the meeting. If from what you've heard from the early presenters, it's clear that an application is not going to be supported and you agree with that, you can cut down what you're going to say even further. However, there's no problem in trying to revive an application if you feel it really has merit or in talking down one that others support if you've spotted significant problems that others may have missed. Signal to the chair if you want to make a point or ask a question when the chair's opened up the proposal for wider discussion. And in that wider discussion, it's important to respect the views of others and expect your views to be respected too. I always uh, have an indicative score that I have in mind uh, for an application um, once I've listened to all of the views around the table. Um, and what, but once I've listened to all the views around the table, I'm, I'm prepared to, to change that um, because people will have brought inf other information and other views uh, to the meeting. And remember that you're scoring the whole application, not just the PPI section, and that each score has a specific meaning. Once the meetings come to a decision about recommendations, then part of your role is to support that decision and to keep it confidential. Thank you for your thoughts, Philip. Nanique, do you have any additional advice? Uh, yeah, if, if this is your first meeting, just remember to stay calm. The more committee meetings you attend, the easier, in theory, it will get. Um, stick to your review summary points and remember all those uh, other people in attendance have read your review on the online research management system. Be blunt and concise and say what you think about the applicant, think how the applicant has actually addressed PPI in the application. Thank you, Nani. Mary, anything to add? Well, actually, it's, it's not so much me, it's the, the best advice that I heard from the programme chair. And she was referring to the reviews that we write as PPI contributors. And what she said was, write the review for the researchers, but focus committee comments on what's important for the decision. So if there's points you care about in your review, but they're not really pivotal to the decision, then just let them go when you prepare for the committee, because the researchers and the committee members see them anyway. Thank you. Steve? Yes, and, and do remember you can comment on other aspects of the application outside of the PPI if you feel it might be relevant to participants, such as if you think something is, is very onerous. But do try to keep your comments in a kind of bullet point style. You don't need to illustrate your comments with stories or examples. And remember, the chairperson is treating you as a valued member of the committee, so try to address your comments directly to them rather than talking to a particular committee member. Great. Thank you, everyone.
Some time ago, we, all, we asked our public committee members if they had any top tips to share with new starters. You can access their tips via the link in the slide. The next slide on the screen shows some advice from our committee chairs that sums up what our public members here today have already said. For our last topic, we're going to talk about how our public committee members can help the chair and the program team. So the chairs say, being succinct is helpful when committees have very little time. Trying not to repeat what has been said, just saying you agree is okay. Please ask someone if you're not clear about something. We all do this and no one will mind. Sometimes diversity gets seen as one dimensional. It is always helpful for PPIE and others to remind us that it can have many forms and implications. Next, I'd like to invite all of you to share your final thoughts or piece of advice before we move on to our question and answer session. Philip, can I start with you? Yes, thanks. Um, I think one of the fundamental differences from doing public reviews to becoming a, a public committee member is that um, you will routinely be assessing applications that are outside your own lived experience. Indeed, you may never come across an application that relates to your own personal experience. You don't need to become try to become a quick expert in any field. It's for the applicants to convince you that they have truly engaged with the people who are affected by the condition in question and that they can, they're planning to engage with them throughout the research. Thank you. Mary, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think really it, it's about the range of different views that come together in that committee meeting. That is the whole point in order to achieve a balanced outcome. And it's a huge privilege to hear so many different views coming and each committee member bringing their own specialism. And actually the value of that is sometimes that you do find your own view changing as Felix referred to earlier. Okay. Monique? Yeah, I would like to add that uh, value for money considerations are paramount because we are talking about public money here and we're asking if the proposal has direct benefit to both patients and the public. We need to ask the question, is the research inclusive and diverse? Have the communities who will benefit the most from the research been consulted and invited to be involved? Hey, thank you. And Steve? Yeah, I think it's it's worth saying that if you're happy with an application and have no questions or feedback points, then that's fine. But, you know, do tell the chairman to feed back to the researchers that you were happy with their application. Um, and I think that's OK. OK, thank you. I'd like to say thank you, Mary, Nanique, Philip and Steve, for your time today, sharing your experiences, advice and tips on the role of a public committee member. I hope our audience has found this session really useful. Now let's move on to the question and answer session and see if anyone has anything to ask. First question we have is, when is it okay for the researchers to suggest excluding some people from the research? Philip? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think that's a really good question. and. Public committee members have a really important role in thinking about this and, and challenging it where appropriate. For example, you need to ask yourself whether excluding people over a certain age or people who don't speak English and not justified because it makes it easier for the researchers. The research has to relate to the real world. Equally, the arrangements of research might sometimes unintentionally exclude some people or be too burdensome. For example, just too many questionnaires for people, too much travel or culturally insensitive arrangements could all conspire to exclude certain groups, certain people, certain communities. So it's your job to spot that and highlight it. Thank you. Um, we have another question. What is the atmosphere like in a committee meeting? Monique? The committees are run against tight schedules and there's not much time for going into too much detail. 
it's worth remembering that everyone will have read your written comments and it's important to just highlight three or four of the main points on the day. Saying this, generally everyone there is friendly and is considered as an equal partner of the group. Thank you. Um, our next question is, what happens if the PPI in a research application appears strong, but the science does not seem appropriate? Steve, can I get you to answer this one? Yes, this does happen, and, and it's quite sad when it does happen sometimes, that you um, have an application where the PPI has been really good, and they've really engaged with the, with the relevant population, but the rest of the committee feels that there are faults within the, the application. Um, if, if those faults are fixable, then the committee will do their very best to feed back facts to the researchers and try and sort it. But remember when you're scoring that you're not just scoring the PPI, you are scoring the whole application. So it's important to take on board comments from the rest of the panel uh, and, and try to make an objective view when you're scoring. But do feel that you can actually feed back to the, to the chair that you were very happy with the PPI and get that fed back to the researchers. Thank you. Now this is an interesting one. You said so many things about what to do at a meeting. What would your advice be on what not to do? Mary? Sure. Um, I suppose don't, um, don't just talk to your PPI colleague. There are breaks during the committee meeting for coffee and usually at lunchtime. It's usually an all day meeting and it's quite important to join other members of the team. It can be just to stand alongside and listen initially, but it's not to separate yourself off as just being the PPI contributors talking to one another. Become a part of the committee. Thank you. Philip, do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, it might be completely obvious that uh, while, the, while the meeting is going ahead, don't start side conversations with the people who are sitting on either, either side of you. There's nothing guaranteed to infuriate a chair more than seeing that happen and um, apart from being discourteous you're just uh, not being part of the committee. Okay. Just just to follow up on that really is, is that you really should be talking to the chair during the course of the meeting and if somebody else on the panel says something that you feel like commenting on, comment through the chair, don't start up a conversation mm -hmm. with that sp specific person. And if they say something you don't agree with or they say, you say something they don't agree with, try and keep it uh, sorted through the chair, don't start up separate conversations. Thank you. Monique, do you want to add something? I think the key lesson that I've learned is to ensure that you remain attentive and listen mm -hmm. to what people are saying mm -hmm. uh, because there's quite a bit of information that comes from other people in the group that has a direct bearing on mm -hmm. many respects what you might say in the context of PPI. So ensure that you, you remain attentive and listen at all times. Yes. That's all. Very helpful, thank you. Um, we've got one final question that's come in and it's, are you all involved in providing written feedback to the researchers? Mary? Um, it's actually, it's quite an interesting question in many ways. Through this webinar, we've referred quite a few times to the reviews that we send in and it's important to say that isn't for all of the programmes. So for example, as far as I remember, for RFPB, uh, the PPI contributors on the panel do their own reviews for themselves, but they don't put them onto the INS for um, other people to see. But the way it works is that those programmes that do have written reviews from panel members, PPI panel members, um, the system, the computer, the internet system where you put your review, those reviews do go back to the research applicants. So they see the full review without your name. So they get a, an, an anonymous PPI review of the full application. In addition to that, from the panel meeting, and this applies for all of the panels, the uh, programme manager, um, together with the chair, puts together the key comments that have been made throughout the meeting. And that includes a section on the PPI comments that should go back to the researchers. So it's one of those times where if you feel there's a particular point that you want to be certain the researchers have highlighted as a result of the committee discussion, you can just say quietly to the programme manager at the end of that bit of the committee session, 
that you'd like to be certain that that one particular point is made. So it, it's, it varies through different programmes, but in all programmes, the panel discussions do include a section on PPI and the comments you've made as a, a PPI contributor on that panel are included. Can I Thank just you. say as well that a lot of the programmes have a stage one and a stage two, mm -hmm. and you'll be asked to comment um, on the stage one PPI, although it's not actually asked for in, in their application. And uh, at that point, you can actually feed back some uh, points about the PPI to the researchers. And that's why sometimes when you get to a committee meeting, if the researchers have taken on board all of your comments, there may be not very much to say, except to say thank you very much for taking uh, account of the things I mentioned first time around. So that's an instance where the researchers will get some direct feedback from you about mm -hmm. their application before they make a stage two application that goes to the panel. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think we have any more questions, so I'd like to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. If you would like a, a link to the recording or in a copy of the slides, and if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to email us on ccfppi at nihr.ac.uk. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to everyone again. Thank you for having us. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Thank you very much.